Are you guys ready? All right. Without further ado, Sugary. I'm very grateful to be here, to be part of the Rain Bar uh, family. This is really just an amazing thing that Kyle has built over the years, and it's really great to see how it's just been able to grow. Speak a little bit about the Empathy Project, which is a project that's very, very near and dear to me. Let's just take it back to the pandemic. Um, nobody was doing really anything, uh, truly. And I was like, I need to do something because I was seeing all the news that was happening in the world and it just seemed like nobody was really talking to each other. People were just trying to entrench themselves further, further, further apart and just stick to their own guns. And I was like, there just needed to be something that would hopefully spark that conversation and inspire that thing that I felt was missing. And of course, the thing that was missing, in my opinion, was empathy. So I set upon myself to just create a shirt. This is it. It had a different fabric back then, but it was what empathy felt like. It was lowercase, it didn't, it didn't demand anything, it was in a neutral tone, it just sort of asked permission. Okay, fine, I'll print 300 shirts, good. And I'll sell it to my friends, I know enough people, I'll make it work. Um, I guess what I didn't expect was that in a week I had sold out of all 300 shirts and more people asking where are you able to get these, I love them. And I guess I had hit on a nerve and I was like, Okay, it seems like this is something that society wants, culture wants. So I was like, how do I take this to the next step without just printing more shirts and continue to sell them? I was like, we have to get people into the idea of buying into empathy itself, but in terms of allowing their expression and freedom of choice, we leave that open because empathy can only be inspired in the most natural way, through dialogue and conversation. You have to be inspired toward empathy. Nobody can expect you or force you down that path. So the way to express it was we got seven different artists to do seven different unique designs all around the idea of empathy. And each one was tied to a nonprofit that was dear to them. And it spans the gamut from small charities to large charities, from uh, charities that, uh, that support uh, gaming rehabilitation for children with disabilities, all the way to Jose Andres' World uh, Central Kitchen. It's wide, but it expresses the, the diversity of human need. And before I kind of uh, go further into the, the nuts and bolts of the Empathy Project, really I want to share here today a little bit about a personal journey for why this ends up being something that is relevant to the Brain Bar. Because as you kind of notice, what Kyle had said was that this thing is all about perspective. There is no right and there's no wrong. But if I'm curious about what it is you are going through, what kind of struggles that you are trying to go through, I'm really trying to feel you. I'm trying to create a connection. That connection ends up being the most important central idea to our ability to function as a society. We have to see each other as a mirror of ourselves. And so in that sense, this effort to generate and inspire greater empathy in the world ends up being in and of itself an act of self-love. We are going out into the world to try to see people from their perspectives. We're trying to get people to feel a little bit more beyond their own place in the, the, their lives, their, the, you know, step out of uh, one's shoes, right? Uh, which is the often talked about perspective, but a lot of people just, they don't even realize how hard that is unless you decide to make that journey. So as I kind of like go through this and I dream further about where this entire project can go, I always try to examine this with the perspective of hoping that this is an inspirational tool, that more people could in one way express themselves by wearing this shirt, but really keep in mind the central idea is that if you care for others, in essence you are caring about yourself because all our struggles are different, but remarkably they are only nuanced versions of similar struggles that we all share. The human experience may, may be vast, but there are a lot of similarities to draw from and that becomes the sort of capstone of the whole thing. 
Uh, since we've launched, the Empathy Project has now gone worldwide. Just uh, 5.30 this morning, uh, I had a friend who had purchased a shirt uh, and went to India. And apparently, uh, she, was, she was mobbed. A whole bunch of people went to her and they were like, this is such an amazing shirt. Like, I love the idea. Uh, this is so great. Another week ago, uh, somebody bought a shirt and went to Australia and wore it and got a very similar reaction. What that tells me is that there is a commonality to what we crave and what we need. We want to be uh, connected to each other. We want to feel each other more. And this shirt, in its very basic gesture, just offers that permission to go do so. But it is only a tool, right? The whole thing still relies on all of you to feel inspired enough to talk to amongst each other, to care for each other, and to get involved in each other's lives. So this is one small act. But in the future, the Empathy Project and its many iterations allows for people to use this as a mechanism to get more involved on the issues that sort of matter to them. There is fully an idea in the next iteration of the Empathy Project for me to work with even more charities of a greater variety. I mean, I've been talking with your next speaker, Maddie, about working with her organization to see if we can do a project around the, uh, the Empathy T-shirt campaign that supports stroke victims uh, and identifying the right charities to support that way. Really, if I can leave you all with anything, the simple idea is this. As you go forward and you feel inspired by anything you see, be it this or be it anything else that you'll hear tonight, that you will take stock in this and that you will go into your own communities, of which this is actually one amazing community, and see if you can feel inspired and compelled to have the discussions that are necessary so that you can arrive at a place where empathy becomes a deeper part of your life. Lord knows the need is vast and we really need to hear from all of you. We need to feel from all of you more than anything. So thank you so very much. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. When inspired your empathy? Lack of empathy in your own life? It was lack of empathy that I was seeing overall in, in society. And there was one way I knew how to do it. Um, I come from a background of music and music representation. So I worked with a gentleman for many years called John Baptiste, and I got a front row seat to seeing how art could impact people. Now, this was a moment in the pandemic where I just felt I wanted to do something, and I was sitting in my room my very, very small room. And I was like, okay, well, let's just slap this on and see what would happen. Because it took off unexpectedly in that way, I was like, okay, well, this is a visual art medium, so let's continue that. But I never lost sight of how art can ignite passion and therefore inspire a movement, which is exactly what I'm trying to pursue. Yeah. So, Akpana Lu, and then uh, we'll end it with uh, Anthony. All right. Yeah, so I was, I was curious, what are, what are some examples from your own time wearing the empathy shirt, like, con like con inspiring, <clears throat> life-changing conversations that you've had with people because of the shirt? Uh, I was on the R train heading home on a late <laughs> night, uh, like 2.30 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> but you're going to love this story. I mean, there was an old man, and he, he looked a little disheveled, but he, it didn't, he didn't seem like he was, uh, he was necessarily homeless. He just, you know, he was, he was an older guy. I think he was coming from a late shift or something like that. And he was, like, staring at me, and I was, like, I was wondering what that was about. And then right as the train was, was pulling in, he, um, he, he, he came up to me. He was just like, young man, what is that shirt about? And I was like, well, first of all, I'm not really that young, but thank you. Um, <laughs> but I just really quickly, because we were already pulling up to the station, I just kind of let him know in, the, in a liner note what the whole <laughs> movement was about. And he basically told me that he not only loved the shirt and that he was going to buy it and let everybody know, but he was like, it really, he's like, I really wish more people your age cared about mm. this idea. Uh, he's like, uh, my own family, he's like, I can't even get my grandson to focus on something uh, when I talk to him about, you know, what's going on in the world and how he can make a difference. He's 
too much, he's, he's too focused on TikTok, and all these things kind of like distract him away from those things. And he was like, I haven't seen anybody wear something, at least for me, that was this profound. And I was like, well, I mean, I really appreciate it. I mean, it really is just a simple act. He's like, yeah, but we sometimes simple ideas are what you need in this day and age to propel change forward. And I thought that was extremely powerful to be getting a message like that at 2.30 a.m. from somebody that was literally just sitting right across from me. And we didn't know each other. So he gave me his card. He was like, please write to me. Uh, I want to purchase a shirt. And he did. So it was amazing. And Anthony? I'm just going to ask if there's any other single word or feeling or emotion that you'd like to see on a t-shirt someday outside of empathy? Uh, community. Mm. Community. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it.